We believe that the COVID-19 is, is representing a global challenge that, uh, you know, it hits uh, all the countries in the world. Qatar has been one of these countries which have been hit by the virus. But, uh, you know, uh, since, since the beginning, uh, when it started to spread close to the region, uh, we took uh, a lot of steps and measures in order to make sure that uh, our population are, are safe. If you will look at the fatality rate in Qatar, it has been the lowest uh, around the world. And yesterday, His Highness the Emir was participating at the conference uh, which was hosted by the UK Prime Minister uh, for raising funds for Gavi. And he announced, His Highness announced the contribution of the state of Qatar by, t by 20 million US dollars. How much has the world failed uh, in terms of coming together to deal with this crisis? We have seen um, countries around the world dealing with it on a national level. There hasn't been a, uh, a gathering of the G20. There hasn't been a gathering of any large group uh, of nations. Um, this is a huge failure by the world, is it not? Well, from our perspective, His Highness has mentioned in his speech yesterday at the conference yesterday that uh, countries are between two choices. Both of them are, are better, either closing down and, and making sure that our people uh, are safe and they, our economy will be affected badly, or we open up the country and making sure that the economy is sustaining and we're putting the lives of our, of our people at risk. Uh, both, uh, both options might be right and might be wrong, but without collaboration and exchange of experience and dialogue, we believe that uh, none of, we cannot adopt uh, uh, a model and learn from each other. Is it not inevitable now that the World Cup in 2022 will have to be delayed because of coronavirus? Well, uh, first of all, uh, the projects of the World Cup uh, almost at 90% completion right now. And we hope by the end of this year or mid of 2021, all the projects will be completed. Uh, we believe that uh, Qatar is working very closely and very strongly with different uh, healthcare organizations to make sure to deliver healthy and safe World Cup. And we believe that uh, it is part of the cure for the world to be back together in, in, uh, in a more, in a, in a happy manner. And uh, coming here, we, we will be able to welcome them here in Doha in, uh, during the World, Cam, uh, World Cup games. And we believe that the entire world uh, needs such an event for, for uh, their emotional treatment uh, after this uh, global challenge that all of us we face and we will make sure to deliver the best ever World Cup with a healthy and, safety and safe environment. Have you had to look at changing the design of any of the stadiums? Uh, have you had to look at perhaps the idea of social distancing uh, in order to keep the, uh, the World Cup plans uh, as they are? Well, there, are, there is an ongoing exercise uh, on, on the organizing committee with, uh, with different stakeholders to make sure that all the healthy uh, health and safety standards are applied uh, in all our stadiums. So uh, it's still uh, something ongoing. And uh, once it's, it's clear for all of us, I'm sure that we are going to put it out publicly. Well, that brings us neatly on to talk about uh, the blockade, which I know is something that you want to talk about. Um, clearly, uh, three years on, it is ongoing uh, within your region. Uh, you are isolated as a consequence of this blockade. You are not. Uh, regionally talking to your partners on coronavirus or on many other things that must be a huge problem this crisis has been manufactured from the beginning and unfortunately we still didn't see any acknowledgement by the blockading state that this crisis is manufactured and they are still uh, repeating the same stereotype what we hope for we hope that one day uh, uh, everyone realize that there are more regional and global challenges that we are facing together that makes us in need to talk to each other and to uh, 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 support each other and to stand with each other. Uh, COVID-19 represented one of the recent challenges that not our country only facing, but also uh, 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 the, 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 entire, the entire world is, is, is facing. What is the key to breaking uh, the blockade? Uh, Donald Trump, has, uh, the American president, appears to have tried a number of times to, uh, to intervene. What's the key? Well, uh, we, we appreciate the efforts of, of the Emir of Kuwait and uh, the, uh, the United States and President Trump trying to resolve this issue. But uh, 
until now we, they are faced with the stubbornness of, of the blockading states. We hope that uh, you know, uh, one day uh, they will realize that it's all needless and we need, we need to come back to reason and to ba come back to our senses and resolve the issue in, in a civilized way. And Qatar uh, has stated its position from the beginning, whether publicly or privately, with our allies in the United States or with our uh, uh, brothers and neighbors in Kuwait, that Qatar is willing to engage in a serious dialogue that based on mutual respect and respecting of the sovereignty and the international law. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't see any of the efforts going so far until now, but we hope that the recent effort by, by both by United States and by the state of Kuwait will uh, yield to, into something positive, positive for our people. One of the concerns that the, the blockading states had was your relationship with Iran. Um, and I want to talk a bit, a bit about that. Uh, the Emir of Qatar was in Tehran, I think the day after uh, Qasem Soleimani was assassinated by the Americans. Uh, Qatar appears to be trying to act as a broker uh, between Iran and the West. Where, where do you see the Iranian situation six months since the assassination of Qasem Soleimani? Let me just state it very clear. Iran is our neighbor. Whether uh, we agree or we disagree with them, uh, they are a country that uh, we are going to live with uh, this year, next year, and forever. So we need to find a peaceful solution if there is any conflict between Iran and the region. Uh, second, uh, when the blockade started, Iran is one of the countries that stood with Qatar very clearly and opened their airspace for us, opened their seaports for us, and they supported us and Qatar and the Qatari people, highly appreciating such a step. Uh, in the time of need, you need, the re you, need, you need friends to stand with you, and Iran proved that uh, uh, they, they stood with us and with the Qatari people. When, uh, and this, uh, despite the disagreement in policies that we have with Iran, and we have been having these ag ag disagreements for a long time. I mean, in Syria, in Iraq, uh, 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 in Yemen, if you will look at, at the policies of Qatar and the policies of, uh, of Iran, has been totally different. After uh, the killing of, of Qasem Soleimani, uh, the next day I was there uh, in Iran. I was there in a scheduled visit to the foreign minister of, of Iran. And we wanted to seize the opportunity to calm down the tension because the tension who has been uh, fueled, unfortunately, by countries in our region is, uh, uh, is going uh, to, uh, to fire the entire region and the entire region is going to pay for it. And we cannot afford it, but we are still in a, in a very dangerous situation and we want to see a final resolution between Iran and the United States and Iran and the other GCC countries. And do you see yourself as a broker, a potential broker between Iran and the United States? Uh, we cannot be a broker unless we are asked by both parties, but uh, Iran is, is our neighbor and the United States is our strongest ally. Uh, if we are asked and accepted by both parties, we will be willing to help, but we are preferring to work together with other countries who are like-minded and helping them, helping them in order to de-escalate the situation and calming down this tension. I want to talk about uh, Palestine, uh, the annexation plan that Israel uh, is proposing. But can I first ask you about uh, israeli Qatar relations? There is, uh, for many months, years now, there's been a suggestion that is, there is a rapprochement taking place between Israel and the Gulf states. How do you see your relationship with the Israelis? Well, uh, when we saw uh, a window of peace back in the 90s, we were uh, one of the first countries or even the first country in the Gulf to take the first step uh, toward having uh, a relation with the Israelis. And we opened the trade mission, uh, uh, the Israeli trade mission here in Doha. But unfortunately, the Israeli behavior showed us a year after year they were not serious about peace. And we hope that uh, these uh, threats of, of taking decision of annexation are not real because we believe it's going to represent as, as, as the last bullet in, in the peace process between uh, the Israeli and the Palestinian. And we want them to come back to the table and directly engage face to face. There is uh, an Arab peace initiative on the table that uh, the, all, all the Arab countries are agreeing to and agreeing to have a normalization uh, if the Israelis are willing to withdraw from the occupied territories and having a, an independent sovereign state of Palestine with the capital of uh, Jerusalem, uh, Eastern Jerusalem, at the borders of 1967.